Hi, I'm Laura Cayali, Politico's technology correspondent, and thank you for being here with us today. So the previous panel touched upon circular economy, devices, and repairability, which is one of the aspects at the crossroad between sustainability and tech. And now we will discuss another one, which is data centers and their environmental impact. Before we start, a few housekeeping rules. Uh, I would encourage people to ask questions via the swap card platform and to tweet with the hashtag Politico Sustainability. And then uh, there's a poll presented by Google that I would encourage people to answer, which is, in your opinion, what is the most effective starting point for tackling the climate crisis? Raising awareness among consumers and citizens, companies and brands leading by example, policy and decision makers setting up new rules in line with the Paris Accord, decarboniza or decarbonization of electricity systems. So we have four speakers with us today. So joining here in person, we have Gabriela Prata Diaz, the head of the Copenhagen Center on Energy Efficiency, and Lena Ilamunonen, uh, the Director General of Finland's, Finland's Ministry of the Environment. And online we have Pierce O'Donoghue, the Director of Future Networks at the European Commission's DG Connect, and Amanda peterson Corio, Google's Global Head of Data Center Energy Delivery. So before we talk about data centers and green and whether they hold the key to a sustainable future, uh, Gabriela, my first question is for you. So in broad terms, what does it mean when we talk about green da data centers? What is a green data center? <laughs> Thank you, and uh, thanks very much for the invitation to be here today. It's, it's a pleasure to be sharing uh, well, this event with a few people, but hopefully a lot of people uh, in online. Uh, just to explain where I'm coming from, uh, I, well, I'm based in Copenhagen in Denmark, but we don't actually work in Denmark, uh, but we try to bring out to developing countries and emerging economies uh, the best practices that we can see in, uh, in terms of energy efficiency in Europe. Um, and here we see huge opportunities around data centers uh, and, and answering to your question. Um, well, the whole digital, uh, sustainable digital transformation brings on huge added value in terms of uh, opportunities for energy efficiency. You see it in buildings, for example, in appliances that we've heard, smart appliances uh, we heard on the session before. Uh, and, and uh, for example, industry uh, 4.0 in electric mobility deployment, etc. But then there's the flip side of, of, of this issue, which is all based in, in data centers uh, and, and the, the huge deployment of, of overall uh, infrastructure that needs uh, to be there for these um, uh, devices to be able to operate. And, and uh, if we are talking about data centers at the moment, uh, our research says that uh, if it would be a country, the whole internet infrastructure, if it would be a country, it would be like the sixth biggest consumer in the world and responsible for about 7% of the whole electricity demand. So um, this puts uh, uh, this industry at par with, with the aviation industry and, and, uh, and also uh, in terms of environmental uh, issues like uh, e-waste that we've been hearing about in the previous session. Um, we, we have also heard about minerals, uh, and we are talking about cobalt, graphite, copper, rare earth, so all these uh, um, um, materials that need to be, to be there for uh, everything to be able to work. So a green data center, in our perspective, would be uh, powered, uh, potentially 100% uh, using renewable energies, that would be uh, focused on greening the supply chain, so making sure that uh, there is a recyclability uh, around the minerals and, and other resources, for example, like water, and, and be very careful in terms of cooling, using, uh, uh, if possible, the best available technologies. Um, and and uh, I'm talking about energy technologies, but also uh, including uh, um, software technologies, for example, um, artificial intelligence. And, and then there's a strong component around behavior change when we use actually these devices uh, that, that could, be, could be also included. Um, just be a bit limiting on the, on the number of emails that we send around on the smart me on the sorry the social media uh, on the streaming etc so 
uh, a strong component there uh, that should also be, be in place. Um, yeah, I'll probably stop here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, and, and Piers, uh, data centers are at the crossroads uh, between the, the Commission's twin priorities, which is uh, digital and, and green. So what, is, what has the Commission been doing to ensure that those data centers are green? Well, <clears throat> thank you. Good afternoon. I suppose my starting point would be that uh, well, to make three statements. We have to take urgent action to achieve carbon neutrality. The second is that digital is a key enabler to do so. Uh, but the third is that the ICT sector and data centers are themselves very energy hungry. So our aim, uh, what the Commission is doing, is to try and square that circle because um, we, we have seen just how important uh, digital technologies will be for helping the whole economy to meet the Green Deal targets to, to head towards um, carbon neutrality. And in the digital decade communication that the Commission issued, we re-emphasized our commitment to making data centers climate neutral by 2030. And those um, highly resource efficient new generation of data centers, they'll really be the backbone for the next generation of, of highly secure uh, cloud capacities and other technologies. But at the moment, according to our latest figures, data centers amount for about 3.2% of the EU's electricity demand, or at least they will do so by 2030, and that is enormous. So we're still uh, designing the policies to tackle these issues because it's um, a complex and, and multi-layered question. Uh, there are various different sorts and generations of data centers. And as we implement the, the Green Deal policies, we really have to also understand, but also respond to the rapidly changing nature of the computing continuum from uh, highly centralized data centers out to the edge computing, which is increasingly a feature. So we have a number um, uh, of initiatives, new options. Uh, clearly, a, a long-term sustainable policy is what we're aiming for to, to meet the Green Deal objectives. And of course, the digital decade, those are the, the twin transitions. So, so what are we doing? We have the Joint Research Centre's Code of Conduct for energy efficient data centres. That's one of the foundations of our action in this area. We have the revision of the Energy Efficiency Directive, which uh, includes a transparent um, uh, gathering of data centres performance, audits about their, 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 their energy consumption, and of course, developing indicators for data centers, which they can be benchmarked against, uh, and, and perhaps other measures can come on that basis. We have the Equidesign design regulation for computers and servers and the other components. We have sustainable finance taxonomy, and we have green public procurement criteria. So that's, that's a quick list hitting you in the face with the with with the answer, some of the answers to your questions, which we can we can get into, but there are a lot of other issues that we have to touch on, including self-regulation initiatives. For example, the Climate Neutral Data Center Pact, and we must there acknowledge what is the role of industry itself in meeting our very ambitious targets, because we will have to work together on what are the new measures. Uh, we need solid evidence for that, data to support the policy and the corresponding indicators. We don't want to kill the development of ICT while we carefully regulate its impact on the environment and make sure that those who are best in class, those who are acting in good faith in the ICT sector are rewarded and they are not undercut by those who are cutting costs, cutting corners and damaging the environment. So uh, we have a lot of work to do with the industry, with other stakeholders. Uh, and we've actually launched a study that we hope to um, have results for in early 2022 to help us in this uh, in this data gathering. So those metrics are essential for all of the policy benchmarking. And then there's all of the uh, awareness raising campaigns where, again, the Commission has to work with others. We're not going to be able to do, nor will we try to, to do that all on our own. We have funding instruments. I can list those as well, but from the search right through to deployment, where even in the national plans for resilience and recovery, we're ensuring that there is a high degree of uh, environmental friendly criteria being imposed, even in infrastructure deployment, including in data centers. So obviously that's a long list. Sorry if it's a bit breathless, but I didn't want to take up too much time. Look forward to the discussion. Thank you. 
And, and maybe just a follow-up question for, for you, Pierce, since you mentioned uh, self-regulation and, and, and pledges. Uh, on, on this topic, because on, on circular economy uh, that we talked about in the previous panel, we see that the industry is not always uh, very cooperative. Uh, on greening data centers, do you feel that the industry is doing enough and is willing to move forward with policymakers? Um, well, I would start by saying that we see that there is a considerable willingness to move, uh, but nobody, including uh, the regulators, are yet doing enough. When you look at the uh, difficulties around um, the COP26, but more importantly, when you look at the targets that the Commission has set and the heads of government have agreed to with regard to 2050. So a lot more has to be done by everybody, including the uh, operators of data centres. And as I've said, uh, some of those uh, operators of data centers will have to incur significant cost if their uh, infrastructures are to be fit for purpose and are to actually be able to reduce their carbon footprint. And that's really important because we know one of the, the key features of extending ICT technologies to all sectors of the economy for good, for productivity, which will help to actually make them more energy efficient. That actually increases significantly the amount of data produced, processed, and stored. And therefore, we have to insist that you know, we have only green computing technologies in the future, uh, and that we don't allow those who would, shall we say, like to drive down cost or cut corners are in any way facilitated. So uh, it's a best-in-class situation, and uh, the Commission will, through regulation as well as facilitating self-regulation, ensure that they are rewarded. Okay. And, and Lena, uh, Finland is one of the few EU countries with a green strategy specifically for the ICT sector. And in that Finnish strategy, what is the role of the, and the place of data centers? Thanks, indeed. I mean, Finland, all in all, we have a very ambitious climate target to become climate neutral already 2035. So we have also then started looking, or basically the industrial sectors and other actors have started to look sector by sector, what they can do. And ICT sector is, is, is certainly, ICT technology sector is, is, is one. Um, so it's, it's, of course, like you said, there are many components, elements in the, in, in the, in the whole, looking at the, let's say, environmental footprint of the, of the ICT, but data centers surely are, and if one thinks from the energy consumption, the, perhaps the biggest. In the ICT strategy, the, the, the government uh, ICT environmental and climate strategy adopted early this year, um, data centers form a part, but it's indeed not the only part. So it, it does look, in, for example, also on the consumer behavior, um, so how to, how to touch that. But data centers, there are elements of that. But then separately, indeed, the technology industry sector has, has made their own low-carbon uh, roadmap. And data centers there are even looked more thoroughly. What, what can one do in the next years uh, to reduce the, the energy consumption, but also otherwise minimize the, um, the footprint, but maximize also the handprint of the, of the ICT. I mean, the, the benefits of digitalization in the, in the fight for climate change, against climate change and, uh, and other, other uh, environmental targets. So, uh, Amanda, Google operates data centers, uh, obviously. So, could you take us through how, how they work, how they're powered? Uh, sure. I, I think, uh, thank you again for having me uh, virtually, and it's been interesting to, to listen to this panel. And so, I'd love to provide um, the perspective from uh, what we're doing and best practices and, and uh, uh, touching on some of the comments that were made earlier. So. I think to think about this, um, you, uh, Google has been working to make our data centers um, some of the most efficient data centers in the world, and we've been doing this for over a decade. Um, and we are continuing to improve the environmental performance, even as our demand, as I've mentioned, has grown and therefore our load has grown. Um, and we're able to do this by taking a full life cycle approach into evaluating sustainability at our data centers. Um, as you mentioned on the power side, um, that's you know, really where my focus is, is thinking about how we can 
uh, draw only carbon-free energy from the grid in each hour of the day. And that's why we set our 24-7 carbon-free energy ambition by 2030. Um, today, we already are matched 100% by renewable energy annually for our global consumption. And we've been doing that since 2017, right? So for the last four years, we've been doing that. We will continue to do that as we reach our next level ambition. Um, but to take a step back, really on the data center energy efficiency side and going back and looking at these different components, we were really focused on thinking about the full life cycle, where we site our data centers, how we design them, and how we operate them. Um, just to expand a little bit on some of these points, one of the things that we think about when siting our data centers is where we can repurpose existing infrastructure. And I heard this mentioned in a previous panel. Um, this existing infrastructure was built for a 20th century economy that is now sitting idle and it's already exists. How can we, when we think about where to site our data centers, use that to, to really use this infrastructure and bring it into the 21st century digital economy. And an example of that is in Finland, we repurposed an old paper mill uh, to build our data center. And in the US, we used a retired coal plant in Alabama uh, and the infrastructure that was just sitting there to build our data center. So we think about this and repurposing and reusing versus having to build something new from the very beginning. When we think about the design, um, energy efficiency is built into everything that we do. So we believe that the best energy saved is the energy that we never consume. Um, and so our data center is actually at Google, are in fact, six times, consume six times less overhead energy when compared to the industry average, and we're about twice as efficient. But it's not good enough just to be better than the industry average. We need to improve upon our own best practices to continue to move down that cost curve. And we can now deliver seven times as much computing power with the same amount of electricity when compared to what we were using just five years ago. So we're continuing to become more efficient, use less electricity at our data centers over time and improve upon our, ever, our already very low and energy efficient performance. How are we doing that? Um, there's a lot of ways, and I'm not going to be able to go through all of that here, but just to give your audience a flavor of some of the things we're doing, uh, we're utilizing new innovations with accelerators. We're using highly efficient computer chips um, to run. Uh, we also are reducing server energy just by removing unnecessary component parts. And we are working with our suppliers to produce more energy efficient uh, components. Um, and in fact, we joined the United Nations race to zero um, and are committed to achieving net zero emissions across not just our operations, but our entire value chain for our suppliers as well. Um, we use advanced cooling technologies, which was mentioned. Um, we rely on energy efficient evaporative cooling and we try to utilize sustainable water practices like using seawater for our data center in Finland or industrial canal water for our data center in Belgium. Uh, to not use or rely on potable water where we, where we can. Um, we reuse the waste heat generated um, by our servers to heat our offices, to heat our on-site facilities. And we are absolutely committed to achieving zero waste to landfill. And in fact, our data centers are at 90% landfill um, diversion currently. Um, so these are just a few of the things that we are working on uh, to be more energy efficient, efficient in addition to consuming carbon-free electricity to power our data centers. Um, but if we just did this, this is, this is not enough. Um, we need to ensure that we are working with industries, with cities, with with the governments to learn and share these best practices with others. Um, I think, Laura, you mentioned uh, self-regulatory uh, initiatives and, and Google is one of the original sag signatories to the Climate Neutral Data Center Pact. And this is working within the European data center industry um, of alliance of more than 80 operators in the industry to figure out how we can share best practice and how we can self-regulate to meet the climate goal of climate neutral data centers by 2030 in the EU. And so we are proactively taking this approach to figure out a solution to the 
pro uh, problem for what we can do on our end. Um, uh, two more points on, on working with others I want to add is uh, just by offering our Google Cloud product to others, corporations in the industry, we can help uh, the overall data center energy be more efficient. And that's because businesses that switch to cloud-based products like our Google Workspace have reported reductions in their IT energy use and their carbon emissions up to 87% because they're now able to catalyze and use what we have built in this highly efficient, energy efficient data center. Um, and finally, even beyond data centers, we're working with cities around the, the world to access the tools that we have at Google so that they can figure out how to do this for themselves. And this is uh, through tools like our Environmental Insight Explorer, which can help uh, cities measure emissions and map out their solar power resource, find strategies to reduce and improve air quality um, for these cities. So I'll stop there. I'm sorry, I also went on a long, a long rant, but there's so many things that we're doing and, and we do want to uh, work with the industry to, to try and share these with others. Uh, and Lena, uh, since the beginning of this conversation, Finland was mentioned, Belgium where Google has data centers. So there's increasingly almost a competition to attract data centers between countries, but also within cities mm -hmm. in countries. So did that happen in, in Finland as well? Yeah, I think there is a sort of a friendly, hopefully, com competition, by the way, also between countries. Uh, I know that many new countries are interested now on these data centers because basically in the in our cold climate it was minus eight this morning when I left and I think it still is minus eight. Um, basically the district heating systems provide a, 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 a plus uh, which can also be economically very very yeah beneficial for the companies themselves because then they can re I mean recover part of the costs of the of the cooling by selling the heat for the for the community where they are established. Um, so indeed, company cities and regions are, are a bit competing now. Basically, we are still using in the big cities of Finland even coal, and and now it's really we have to find solutions in all cities how they can replace that by either indeed zero carbon or these kind of innovative a bit different technologies and, and, and systems. But the key there is that the data centers are then somehow all integrated into the existing energy system. So great um, to use the refurbish, I mean, and repurpose an existing um, paper mill or other, other installation, but also that it should have the infrastructure, for example, for using the, the district heating where that makes sense. Of course, there are other climate regions where it may not at all make sense, but but then that's, a, that's another thing, and maybe then other, other aspects uh, are, are considered. Um, so recovering of the waste heat is, is really a, a one of the sort of competitive advantages, I think, um, of the, of the Nordic, uh, or Nordic countries. But, um, but also there are, there are indeed other, other reasons, and, and of course, I mean, overall skilled workers, uh, and I mean, digital, digital nature, I mean, a country with, with citizens of, of having a high rate of uh, digital equipment, etc. I think all those also, also play a part, so with whom to have a partnerships with. And the, the heating that, that you mentioned, there's actually a question from the, from the audience about that, that, uh, that is for, for you, Pierce. Uh, it says, why don't we only talk about data centers using green energy and becoming more efficient? And why is there not more effort and focus in re reusing the energy used by data centers for heating homes? So is that a, a focus for the, the commission and what it means to be a green data center? Yes, and, and it's a fair question the way it's asked because there has been a tendency perhaps just to appear to focus on on that headline issue, which is the uh, data consumption, the power consumption, sorry, of data centers and trying to make sure that that is, is, is green, uh, non-fossil generated uh, energy. Because uh, just as been mentioned, there are issues about water use. There are issues, of course, about materials, which was discussed in previous panels, but is essential uh, for the green data center piece that all of the materials are recycled and that there's much less waste. Uh, but then on this point, in terms of reusing energy, that it is possible, we have seen, again, best-in-class uh, performance, where um, 
uh, data centers are actually producing electricity for the grid, for the public grid. And then the other uh, waste heat, as it were, excess heat is used for municipal heating systems, uh, as Lena has explained. And that is something which will not only be encouraged, but which uh, ultimately will become part of the set of indicators where we, we don't just fixate on one uh, indicator for the uh, power utilization of a data center, but we will look carefully at these other areas, including how they are actually supporting uh, heating, which then removes the need for, uh, for, 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 for carbon generation for the purposes of heating. Uh, and also then, of course, the other issues I've said about water and recycling and so on. So that, that will definitely be a focus, and it's right that that question is raised. Okay. And, and another question from the audience that touches upon the competition uh, issue between, between countries. Uh, Gabriela, someone from the audience is saying that data centers um, are becoming contentious in small countries such as Ireland. Um, and according to estimates, they currently represent 11% of the country's grid capacity. So isn't there a risk that countries want to be attractive to data centers and then it takes up a lot of their energy ability? Yeah, yeah, that's definitely an issue. Uh, and and uh, the case of Denmark, from what I also see, uh, that there are some estimates that say that in 2030, about 17% of the energy demand will be from data centers. So actually, I mean, it's a good location. Uh, it's, it's relatively cold. Uh, uh, a huge component of uh, renewable energy is in the energy mix. And, and the opportunity to use waste heat in the district heating uh, uh, locally. So that definitely, uh, uh, this is uh, this is a, a topic also uh, in in Denmark. But then. Um, in our perspective, we also work with uh, developing countries and emerging economies, and in this space we see uh, also resource competition in places like in Africa where we are discussing still energy access to energy, so um, to modern en energy services. So, so if we are introducing uh, more demand in terms of energy in other uses than, than the basic uses, uh, Let's consider that uh, uh, lighting, for example, is, is a basic use. So there's actually a competition there. And, uh, uh, and, and the same we could say about other places like uh, very populated areas in, in Asia where, where there is uh, uh, also a huge demand and, uh, and some grids or some electricity grids very dependent on fossil fuel generation type of electricity, which also is adding uh, uh, stress also in, in the grid. So, so um, these, are, these are actually uh, touch points. And uh, again, also water is, is, is an issue as well, water, water demand associated with, uh, with data centers. Um, so, in, so in Europe and developing countries, what should be the technical criteria for future data centers? Yeah, I mean, when, when uh, actually we, we are making an exercise with uh, the World Bank, for example, on, on I mean, developing countries access World Bank to uh, borrow uh, money to develop uh, dat new data centers or retrofitting old ones, and actually uh, we are making together with them an exercise on how, what would be the matrix, the appropriate matrix to select what would be the best solution. There's no civil bullet, of course, but uh, I mean, looking into uh, the, the energy mix of a specific country, the availability already of infrastructure, the water availability, the climate zones uh, they are inserted in. So these would be uh, critical factors in, in selecting the best option. And then, of course, we can talk about uh, skills and uh, uh, needed as well, and, and if there are regulation uh, or not available in the country, uh, uh, and, uh, and, and green procurement as well, and how to monitor then these investments. So definitely, yeah, this is a, a relevant topic. And uh, Amanda, how does Google choose uh, countries where they will build data centers? Well, there's a number of factors um, that go into where we site a data center. And of course, thinking about uh, energy efficiency, reliability, uh, and impact play into that. Um, but as we uh, think about serving cloud customers, as I mentioned, 
we're not just building data centers to serve our Google products like YouTube anymore. We're building data centers to serve other enterprises that want to utilize our, our technology and our platform. And so that really is, is changing the conversation and driving where, where we go. And what it's meaning is that we are going to more countries and we are looking at different types of data centers uh, and different sizes. We talk, uh, talked about edge computing um, to be able to deliver the same quality data center to our cloud customers where they are located. Okay, uh, and and Lena, because we, we talked about dialogue with the industry, self-regulation, and and we'll touch upon that again a bit later. But uh, when you drafted the national strategy in Finland, uh, how did the dialogue with the industry go, and what was the role in in helping or or hindering the strategy? No, I think the cooperation with the industry sectors, all in all, in Finland has been very, very good, and it is a very powerful powerful element in our whole climate uh, policy that the energy, energy sector, um, the ICT sector, all basically all major industrial sectors have wanted themselves to, to create these roadmaps uh, for their low carbon future. So, and all then feeding into the, uh, to the government policy. Um, and of course, they, what is really important that they also look into each others. For example, the energy consumption or electricity consumption is a, is a common factor with, the, with most of the, of the industry sectors, and they need to look into the, together, uh, will there be enough uh, electricity and what can be done to, to maximize the efficiency of, of, of that use. So I think overall the cooperation with the, with the industry sectors co companies, of course, especially the front runner, runner companies, they are always, of course, those also who, who sort of more, more like behind. Um, and then the industry associations themselves has been very, very important and fruitful. Okay, and Finland was the, uh, the whole, whole the presidency of the EU Council a uh, few m months back. Uh, was there dialogue with other EU countries about sustainable and digital? Or, or do you feel uh, that other countries are, are willing to, to work on that too? When we were the, we hold the presidency of the European Union, it was 2019 autumn, um, and digitalization was indeed a big thing for the Finnish presidency. Um, I think we advanced, um, but now already in those, say, two years, I think we have, the world has yet changed a lot. The, the services that digitalization is providing, they have become really, really, I mean, hugely, hugely essential also during the and because of the pa pandemic. So I think um, maybe two years ago, not all member states were at the same level, but I think that this, this COVID uh, pandemic has made a quantum leap in pretty much every member state, I, I believe, in the digitalization issues, and hence also on these the, the evident um, negative impacts that ICT consumption of energy resources, um, all these have to also be taken into account. So it has both indeed benefits and 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 uh, and drawbacks which need to be regulated somehow. And I believe yes, many of these things have to happen at the European level because we have a common market. So what do you expect? The, what do you want the Commission to do? Look holistically, uh, definitely, and this digitalization, digital agenda is definitely linked to many policy areas, but also to the climate, climate um, policy, the Fit for 55 package, um, and of course on the on the resource efficiency and, and circular economy um, uh, aspects as well. But also then there are social aspects. There are there are many other aspects that, uh, that are also linked to to these issues. So. We hope that the Commission is, is keeping an eye on the, on the overall um, policies and how they interlink uh, to each other. Mm. Okay. Uh, and we, we briefly mentioned, Pierce, you briefly mentioned earlier uh, ta taxonomy. Uh, so could you update the, the audience or of uh, what the criteria, the current criteria are and, and what potential future criteria could be added? Uh, the, the short answer to that is no, I couldn't in any meaningful way because it's something that we're still working on. Uh, obviously, it is in relation to uh, 
you know, sustainable finance and whether uh, investments are allowed to be categorized uh, with regard to uh, their green credentials, with regard to their contribution uh, to the Green Deal, or shall we say their respect of, of criteria, uh, but also where there are uh, in, um, uh, systems at national, or perhaps at European level, but at national level, which would uh, provide favorable tax treatment for investments if they were to meet uh, with certain uh, targets or criteria that have to be established. And uh, there's a lot more work going on uh, between our colleagues in DG Environment and also uh, DG uh, ECFIN to, to actually elaborate on these issues. But in many cases where it has come to the attention of the industry has been in relation to how it may be viewed from a competition point of view also. Uh, where there may be aids or where there may be uh, uh, market practices, where it is essential that we have clear, independent, objective uh, rules with regard to that taxonomy uh, in order to ensure that we do not again have people um, uh, 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 working against the level playing field. But one, of course, where we are seeking to raise that, to raise the bar, and I'm mixing my metaphors terribly. Um, Laura, can I just say one thing about the, the, the competition between countries? I, I wanted to come in there just to go back to that for one second. Sure, sure. It's that as, as the technology improves uh, through efforts by industry, but also through research efforts funded at European and national level, uh, through the improvements, for example, in the uh, power capacity, sorry, the, um, uh, the um, uh, energy efficiency of chips, etc., the operating range of of uh, racks of the, the core part of, the, of a data center uh, in terms of temperature has increased. So we should see that there would be less competition on the basis of, shall we say, the cold climates, um, but also that will allow uh, a, a greater range of uh, siting decisions to be made if, of course, the data centers meet other criteria. But this is going to be very important because as the huge amount of data processing increases exponentially, and as we see more and more edge computing, we have to also be very conscious of the energy demands of literally transporting the data, that is to say, sending it down the, uh, the, the, the fiber and the copper pipes. Uh, and that is something which increasingly we have to look at. So in fact, if we do have a widespread array of energy efficient data centers across the European Union, that will also contribute to the energy efficiency. So that's something which we must take into mind and we can think that at the moment that there may be some uh, competition for who's the best the venue for, for data centers. So sorry for going back on that when you asked me about another question. No, that's great. Thank you. Uh, so we have only two uh, minutes left. Uh, so my question, my last question is for you, Amanda. Um, to summarize, uh, do you think that industry standards are more efficient than hard law? Uh, well, it's a, that's a bit of a loaded question, so <laughs> I'm going to, to answer it uh, this way, which is to say, I think they're ha having consistent standards that the industry can perform against is extremely important because um, having something that we know what the benchmark is and what we're being measured against uh, allows us to make decisions uh, on it. Uh, that said, it needs to be the right standard, right? It, and, and make sure it's promoting the right end result, um, which is to um, have a, a net positive uh, environmental impact. And I think it has to be an open dialogue between uh, the operators and those uh, setting the standards to understand what is going to have the most impact and, and not make assumptions on, on either end, right? Because uh, the operators best understand how data centers run, what works, what doesn't, um, what has the biggest impact. Uh, the regulators have the, the overall picture and view of what they're trying to achieve. So it really needs to be a partnership between the operators and the regulators on what those standards are to have the biggest impact. Okay, well, thank you very much to the four of you for, for being here. Uh, thank you to the audience here and, and online. Uh, so the results of the poll are that uh, 
63% of people think that the most effective starting point for tackling the climate crisis is policy and decision makers setting up new rules in line with the Paris Accord. So Pierce and Lena, it's uh, <laughs> in your hands now. Um, and after this, we have a sponsor segment by our presenting partner, Syngenta. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you.